the city of ashes. There's no the in front of it, Jayan. It's gonna be a long video. Look for the the that I really read. Like. It's Jay, and today I'm here with my July wrap-up video. I read a total of 10 books, which personally, I think is pretty good because I work full-time, and then I come home and I'm exhausted and I barely read anything, so 10 books is pretty good. It, I cut it in half from when I was doing nothing. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read for the month of July is City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare. This is the second book in the Mortal Instruments series. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I think that this book started off very slowly and I wasn't really in it that much but it got progressively more interesting as it went on. There's definitely a lot more plot development and world building in this book than there was in the Mortal Instruments. I was able to call what happened to Simon from the first couple of chapters. I was like, this is what's happening to him, I 100% guarantee it, and then that's what ended up happening. Not gonna say what it is, because spoilers, but I mean, if you've read this book, which you probably have, you know what I'm talking about. Also, Magnus Bane, still my love. absolutely love Valentine. I hate him, but just everything about him makes me so happy and angry at the exact same time. Jace is still a sarcastic asshole in this book, which I personally love, and also the fairy queen was so evil and it made me so happy. I liked how the chapters were divided in this book, how everything was like a flashback or it was like in the present time, but it was from multiple different characters' perspectives in one chapter. I thought that was really cool. The second book that I read for the month of July is actually part of a booktube tour, which is run by Grace over at Lovingdom Books, so I'll leave all the links down below. If you want to check that out and become a host, I recommend it. It's lots of fun. But it is There Once Were Stars by Melanie McFarlane. I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. If you want to check out my spoiler-free review, I'll leave the little cardy card. Whichever side it is, I still don't know. I'll leave it up there and you can check it out to hear my full thoughts on it. The third book that I read for the month of July is The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith. I loved this book. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. This book follows Eden, who was 14 when her best friend's brother, Kevin, raped her. Eden doesn't think that anybody will believe her, so she ends up burying the truth and not telling anybody. And it's basically now Eden is on this downward spiral, and it tells her story through four years of high school and how she's trying to cope with what happened to her. The book is told in four sections. As I said before, it is told over her four years of high school. And it shows how Eden changes each year, the good ways and the bad ways. And I just think that it was such a cool concept on how to portray this character's narrative. The book was such an emotional roller coaster for me. And as I was reading it, I just wanted to take all the pain away from Eden. She had been through so, so much. A, that the author portrayed the story was so graphic, but it was done so well that it wasn't in your face. And I just loved it so much. I think it was so well done and I highly, highly recommend reading it. It's it's just such a good story. And I wish so badly that there was a sequel to this book because I have so many unanswered questions about Eden and what happens next and I just... <sighs> I need a sequel, Amber Smith, please. The fourth book that I read for July is That Summer by Sarah Dessen. This was actually my first Sarah Dessen book, which is probably a shock to a lot of people because I own, like, all of her books. I just never read them. And I ended up only giving it a three out of five stars. I didn't like it that much. I flew through it. It was very easy to read. It just didn't grasp my attention at all, and I wasn't needing to read it. It was just kind of like, okay, cool, like, it's a story. I wasn't like, oh my god, I need to know what happens next. This book follows Haven, whose life is changing, everything in it is different now. That's when her sister's ex-boyfriend Sumner shows up and he was the perfect boy in her mind and he was part of the perfect summer that happened so many years ago. I really did like how the main focus was on family dynamics and not romance or anything like that, but I related to Haven a lot. In the story she's too tall, which is like what I grew up with thinking, that being tall is bad and just her going through the process of finding herself and being comfortable with who she is, I really related to that. So that, that aspect is probably why I ended up giving it a 3 out of 5 stars instead of a 2 out of 5 stars, just because I related to Haven so much. The ending of this book I really didn't like. I felt that I was kind of ripped off because I was waiting for something huge to occur, and I thought that the ending was just anticlimactic. And I was like waiting for this huge secret to be revealed, and then it was just like the end. And I was like, really? That's, that's it? Okay, I'm underwhelmed. And I don't like this book, so yep, that's my thoughts. The next two books are part of the same series, and it is The Heir and The Crown by Kira Cass. 
The Air, I ended up giving 3.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. Same with the fifth book, The Crown, I gave it a 3.5 stars. I just didn't think they were necessary for the series. I think that it could have ended at the one and everything would have been A-OK. -okay. These two books take place 20 years later after the selection between America and Maxon occur, and it is the daughter of the two of them, and her name is Princess Edelin. I found her very annoying and self-centered, and I just didn't enjoy the story as much as I did the other three books. Edelin ends up having her own selection, and basically it is now The Bachelor in book format. I was able to call the ending of the series. It was obvious who she was going to choose. And although she picked who I wanted her to, I just didn't care that much for the story, but it was still entertaining. It's again trash, but you gotta read it because it's addictive. The seventh book that I read in the month of July is City of Glass by Cassandra Clare. This is the third book in the Mortal Instruments series. I definitely like this one the best. I ended up giving it five out of five stars on Goodreads. The beginning of the book started off slow for me and I was really disappointed because I didn't think I was gonna like it that much, but I ended up loving it by the end of the book. I was so engrossed in it by the middle of the story. The character development in this book is so well done and I didn't think that I would feel so connected to the characters, but I love all of them. I just, I need to know what happens next, but I have to finish the Infernal Devices first and then I can finish the story. It's just, it's so, so good. And the plot twist literally had me gasping. I, I did not see it coming. I had theories about what was gonna happen, but I was nowhere close to what actually happened, but I'm loving the series. The eighth book that I read for the month of July was part of Booktubeathon for me. It was the one book I actually finished for Booktubeathon. If you wanna check out any of my updates or my TBR or whatever I was supposed to read, or my wrap-up, it will be up in the card, and you can check that out if you're interested. The book is The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. This is the book I read for the book-to-movie adaptation. Did I watch the movie? No, so technically I didn't even finish a challenge, but it's fine. I ended up giving this book a 3 out of 5 stars. It started off really well for me. I thought I was going to love it, and then it just gradually became so slow and boring that I just didn't want to pick it up. So it was a bit of a disappointment for me because I love the movie so much, but this just wasn't for me. The book follows Susie Salmon, who was 14 when she was raped and murdered by one of her neighbors, and it is basically her looking down from heaven onto the life that she once lived, and she watches how people cope with her murder. And I just, it was underwhelming for me. I just, I thought it was going to be better than it was. The ninth book that I read for the month of July is Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in the Infernal Devices series. I ended up giving it a 4.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. I loved it. The plot was absolutely amazing. The setting was amazing. It was set in London 1878 and it follows Tessa Gray who has this special power and I don't want to get much into it but honestly I love this series so much more than the Mortal Instruments so far. Granted I've only read the first book of the series but I'm hoping to read the second and third in August. This is just so fantastic. Magnus Bane is still my bae. I'm so glad he was included in this book. I can't decide who I want Tessa to choose in her little love triangle between Jem and Will. Honestly I love them both equally and I think that she should just date both of them. I think that that should be allowed. I don't care that it's morally wrong because I love them both and whoever she doesn't choose I'll date, whatever. I cannot wait until I read the next two books. The final book is Everything Leads to You by Nina LaCour. I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows a girl named Emmy who is a set designer. She and her best friend Charlotte end up living in her brother Toby's apartment for the summer and basically his only rule is that something epic has to occur in order for them to stay there. And they end up going to an estate sale for a actor who died and his name is Clyde Jones. He's very famous and they end up purchasing a record and inside this record they find a letter to a woman named Caroline Maddox and this sets them on this crazy adventure on trying to return the letter to Caroline and it's just such a beautiful story. I loved the story so much. It's an LGBTQ plus book and I loved how it wasn't just a coming out story. Emmy was already fully out and happy with who she was and I just loved that. And I loved how you got to see behind the scenes of everything Emmy was doing for the movies she was working on. I thought it was a really cool concept and I loved how the focus wasn't on the romance, it was more of the mystery of the book, and I just loved it so much, it was so good, guys, read the book, read it. Alright guys, so that was my July wrap-up, I will see you all in my next video, goodbye!